hi, here we are. <laughs> uh, we are live. And we have a fun guest this week on Mom Cave Live. We have Sheila, who is better known as the Orange Rhino. And um, if you don't know the Orange Rhino, you can go to theorangerhino.com. But um, do you want to tell us where the Orange Rhino came from and, and what the challenge is? I think you could explain it better than me, probably. Absolutely. It's actually um, it's one of my favorite stories. So to take a step back, I got caught yelling um, at my four boys, who were then five and under. And that's obviously important, but not near as fun as the name Orange Rhino. And I had it. And the next day, I'm like, I'm going to go 365 days without yelling at my kids because I felt like it had to stop. But I didn't have a name, and I really wanted something to motivate me. And, like, the next day, I went to buckle all the kids in the minivan. I had, like, three in. I was buckling the five-year-old, and he screamed in my face. And I said, if Mommy can't yell, what does that mean for you? And he was, he was picking his nose, like most boys do. And he's right. like, I can't yell, but I can still pick my nose. Which I, I thought was hilarious. It was just sounds reasonable. It is, and I'm like, you know what? This is all about being fun and taking on the challenge in a different way. And I looked up nose, which means led me to rhino. And rhinos are naturally calm animals that charge when provoked, which is yeah. what I am as a parent. Like I consider myself calm-ish, but when I was triggered, I charged with my words. Right. Um, so I wanted to be a rhino, but not a gray one. I wanted to be warm and loving, orange, and also determined. Because gosh knows this was going to be hard, and that's also what orange means. So orange rhino, there you have it. Awesome. So for those of you that aren't familiar, um, Sheila did an orange rhino challenge, of, like she said, did not scream at her kids for 365 days. And it's gone way beyond that. <laughs> you have a counter on your site that says, like, an amount of days not yelling, and you're in the 500s or something now, right? Yes, I went um, 520 days without yelling, which was awesome. Um, the day I finally yelled, it was in July sometime, and I just, I had had it. I tried all my tricks that morning. I was talking to myself, like, you can do this. I took a break. I put my head in the freezer to calm down. But I think, pretty sure I was PMSing that day, and I had a fight with someone, and just, I lost it. Um, but the cool thing was, at that moment, I didn't have a meltdown. Like before, before the Orange Rhino Challenge, if I made a mistake and yelled, I would have beat myself up. I would have cried. I'm such a bad mom. But I realized mm -hmm. that mistakes happen, and I forgave myself because that's what I learned to do. And I picked up, and I just um, carried on. And I do my best, you know, to yell less every single, you know, each day. Some days are perfect. Some days I'm more cranky than I want. But, you know, in the beginning it was about the number of days because that changed me and helped me retrain myself. But now it's just about more loving moments. I think it's kind of amazing. First of all, the first time I met you, we were at an, um, an event, and I had not heard of your website, <laughs> book, anything. And I walked up to you, and when, as I read that you went this long without yelling at your kids and what the book was about, ah, okay, so then when you told me that you have four children, <laughs> <laughs> like that, that, that elevated you from really, really awesome to basically the diva of parenting because. I only have one, and I, I don't know if I've made it that, I don't know how many days I've made it without yelling. It's, it's not a lot. It possibly <laughs> could be only counted on one hand. Um, but it's really inspirational, and I think what's also cool is how you, you don't, you don't say, like, you're perfect. Like, I did this, and I'm perfect. You give people tools how to do it, and you admit that it's hard, and you will have setbacks. And yes. Yeah. So you have a, on your website, I'm going to print this out. Everyone, you should too. She has uh, like a hundred tips for when you want to yell what to do. Yes. Um, what do you think is the strangest one maybe on there? Um, well, the most fun one since it's cocktail hour in some houses is my mom actually didn't give me this tip, but she does is it eat frozen grapes and pretend you're drinking wine. It just, you know, sometimes it sounds crazy, but I opened the freezer one day when I was trying to like get Eggos Lego Eggos, whatever they're called, waffles out. I had forgotten to right. take them out. They were yelling at me, and the freezer air just, like, hit me, and I'm like, ah, oh, and it just cooled me down. So then I started doing a lot with the freezer. I yell into the freezer. I will put my head into the freezer and shut the door. I will yeah. put frozen grapes out of it, and everyone's like, you're crazy. And I'm like, yes, but I'm relaxing. My kids think I'm crazy, so they stop, and they're like, mom's losing it again. And then we kind of all just relax, which – Really, that's the point of learning to not yell. It's like, how do you diffuse the bomb in the moment right. so that you just bring it down a notch? And I think there's a quote, 
gonna get it wrong. It's like no one succeeded without having fun, and that's yeah. kind of all my um, tips are like that. You know, sometimes I'm gonna look like a moron on you know on this, but I'll start yelling. I'll be like, ah! And I'll like turn into like a gorilla, or I'll bark like a dog, or whistle, or I'll put my hands up and be like, hands up, baby, hands up. You know the song. Right. Um, so I just had fun with it because I don't know, parenting's hard and learning to yell us is boring. So why not get a little crazy? I think those are good tips. I guess the the freezer air like does something to your brain, like the the primal part of your brain, which is the part you're using when you're yelling at your kids. Let's yes. be honest. It's like this, not not your um intellect. No. Uh, it's the primal part of you that's like, ah, oh, this is happening. And it's something shocking, like freezing yes. air, I guess, kind of short circuits that. No, it, it does. The other thing that works great to your point is that I learned this from my kids' occupational therapist, is being physical in the moment. I don't mean, you know, hitting, but dropping and doing push-ups or doing right. wall presses or having crab walks. You know, remember like you're a kid in gym class, you like walk yeah. like a crab or you walk like a bear on all four. Um, there is like a technical reason why that calms you down but it actually does. So you're like working your biceps, you're doing a workout at the same time as calming down, plus the kids will start doing it, which helps them chill out. So it's a win, 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 big time. So talk about multitasking. You are also exercising while not yelling at your children. Yes, yes, which, you know, that never gets in. The other multitasking thing, this one, all right, this one's gross. It did not make it into my book. Um, it's a great picture, though. I was making meatloaf one night, and it was dinner, which is prime, like, let's scream at mom time. Like, I don't want this. I don't want meatloaf. And I just started squeezing it more and more. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, cooking is a great way to relieve stress, especially at dinner. Um, yeah. So there you go, like you can use dinner to relax, grab a cloth and just kind of like wring it out or start scrubbing. Like I noticed that one day, they were driving me nuts, I'm like scrubbing the counter clean. Yes. Um, so there's a lot of things to do in the moment, you just have to start, it's all about becoming aware. Right. Yeah, focusing your energy on something else. My son has that magnetic sand, which is awesome, I don't know if you've seen that. I so cool. It's so neat to play with and, and one day, I, you know, I just started putting my hands through it and feeling and it was really relaxing in, in yeah. the moment and just kind of, yeah, centered me for a second. Um, but how about, had, had did you see a change in the kids when, once there was a change in you? Did they act the same or different? No, they definitely acted different. Everyone's like, oh, so your kids are perfect now? And I'm like, no, they're still four boys. They have their moments. Right. They hit each other. They spit, all that. But I will say... Once I calmed down and started yelling less, there was more peace in the house because I wasn't all like worked up and agitated and therefore, you know, they became more calm. And so right. they naturally behaved a little bit better and because I was calm, I could ask them more clearly how to, you know, you need to chill out or you need to stop. And so because I was speaking clearly, they understood me better and they responded faster. So there definitely was an improvement. Um, and I think the calm, I didn't realize how, up, okay, I knew I was uptight. I still am. But I didn't realize how much, like, um, not calm energy I carried around. And when I became an orange rhino and I really took the yelling out and became so much more chill, the whole house felt it. I mean, I still look back to that year and I can, it was awesome. Um, and I still have those moments. I mean, it's not like I've stopped. But so they definitely, they did change. And even now, sometimes my little six-year-old gets upset and he'll grab a squeeze ball and he'll be like, I just want to yell, you know? So they've learned from it too, which I didn't, I don't know. I didn't plan on teaching them how to manage their anger. I wasn't realizing that was a great byproduct. Yeah, that's really important. It, because it, it's so funny. I would find myself yelling. The whole problem was my kid was having a tantrum because he doesn't know how to control his emotions because he's two or three and he's and then I start yelling and I realize oh my god like I'm 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 being the worst example right now of what I'm telling him to do which is get yourself under control. Um, <laughs> it's so hard to do. It's so hard. So, no, I yeah. realize. Um, I was thinking about it one day. It's like you know you're going to be a parent. You're like I'm going to teach my kid to say please and thank you. You know to push their chair and you all these basic things you think you're going to teach your kid write a thank you note it never once dawned on me that I need to teach my kid anger management. I don't know, it just wasn't, yeah. 
on my radar. And obviously, you learn that for the workforce. You know, this is how you interact with people. This is how you stay cool. But it's like a given, I guess, for people. So it wasn't on my radar. But I'm like, wow, I need to teach them how to not, you know, lose it when they're really angry. Because you're right. When they're that young, they're still learning. I mean, shoot, I'm 30, whatever. I have tantrums. Just when the kids are sleeping, I'll have a meltdown in front of my husband. He's like, what's wrong with you? You're acting like you're two. I'm like, I know, you know. So I don't know. I get it. Well, you kept it together in front of the kids. I mean, you can't be superwoman. you got to let it out at some point, I'm sure. Yes. You know what? That's actually a really good point. Someone asked me that in the beginning. They're like, okay, I'm not yelling, but I'm, I'm like, I have all this pent-up energy. What are you doing? Yeah. And, um, I think exercise was part of it, but someone, another Orange Rhino reader had a great tip, which was they schedule a scream. So it's like if you know it's a bad day, PMS is the perfect example. Like most people, uh -huh. I learned you pinpoint a day, you're like, okay, I'm going to have a scream at noon, three, and at five o'clock. And that way you're getting it out because it really is, it does feel good to be to scream, let's be honest. Um, so you're getting it out of your system and you're releasing that stress without doing it on your kids. And even like, think about it, when you go to the playground with your kids and you run around screaming, it just, it, it lets it out. So I've done that one a lot and it, it works wonders. That's so great. Um, I have to admit, I'm struggling with this, and I haven't started the challenge <laughs> myself yet, but I should. It's, no, you're probably, I'm sure you're a very good mom, even if you do yell. I mean, everyone everyone yells. That's like the thing. It's like, it's like oh, I'm such a bad parent. It's like, okay, we're not perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's so many posts, and I still didn't put it up. It's, you know, a year ago, two years ago, I was going down on myself for how much guilt I had that I yelled at my kids for so many years and this and that, and I'm like, it dawned on me that that's not all I did. I didn't just yell at them. I also showed up and I loved them and I made them lunches. It's like the yelling doesn't define me, um, but I let it in my mind. I'm not saying don't change. Change is awesome, but I'm sure there's a lot of good things too. Yeah, I find it. I think it's important for your kid to see that you are human. Like, you know, you have to be the parent. You have to be in charge. But there are some times when I do show my son that I'm upset in, a, in another way yes. or you know that I don't always achieve what I want to achieve and I can fail and I can be disappointed and so this the challenge is also good because you kind of talk about what to do if you if you have a, a slip up and yeah. that you know it happens in front of the kids they know you've slipped up yeah no you're right because in many ways um, you know they do see it and it's a great learning learning opportunity to one apologize and two, to be like, okay, I made a mistake, and I'm not going to get down on myself. I'm going to pick up and keep going because that is life, you know. Um, and I think in the beginning when I started, I went, I went eight days, and then I lost it. I could not get back on the wagon. And then yeah. one day I woke up, and I finally forgave myself for slipping up. Then I went 520 days. It was like I just needed to say to myself, okay, you screwed up. So what? Not the end of the world. Like, forgive yourself, love yourself, and move on. And that's something I'm not very good at. Um, it's hard. It's hard to do, but I want my kids to learn that, if nothing else, you know. So, totally. so you, um, you've had the blog, and you have people that are following you and learning from you. But now it is an actual official book, everyone, that is about to come out. You can pre-order it on Amazon, and it comes out on October fifteenth. Yes. And our, our giveaway for this week is somebody who leaves a comment on this video will get a copy of the book, your own copy. Um, so I would love to hear about either your best tip for when you're about to lose it with your children, yep. or because I love embarrassing stories and that's a lot of what we do here on Mom Cave, tell me about one of the times you did lose it with your children. Oh my god. Um, um. Yeah. I will go for the embarrassing, but the funny thing is, is that I block them out of my mind. I was trying to think of yeah. them, and I'm like, I just can't, I can't think of one. But truly, it was when I decided to stop yelling. That was the most mortifying one. So when I was pregnant with my fourth son, we decided the day after we took the pregnancy test that we needed to renovate to make room for fourth child. Literally. Well, that sounds reasonable and stress-free. Yeah, totally yeah. brilliant. Great way to spend your last pregnancy. <laughs> So right. the nine months pregnant with three boys, we lived in our house while renovating. So wow. all the workers are in and out. You know, there's wires everywhere, boys, wires. It's like, do not hang on them. I didn't yell because I'm like, I have all these workers watching me. I don't want to seem like a lunatic. Okay. 
they move out, I have the baby, I'm post, you know, post baby hormonal. I'm in my bedroom with the breast pump, which I just could go off on for 45 minutes. You know, it's awful. The baby's finally sleeping. I get the three older boys in my room. I shut the door. I'm like, just 10 minutes. 10 minutes is all I need. And within seconds of sitting down and attaching, and you can't, you know, just get up and move because you'll lose breast milk. Yeah. No one wants to do. They find the spare parts from the hospital pump. One is like whipping the tubes around. The other has the horns. And as I think he was catapulting them, I don't know what the other one, but my room became a war, like a war zone. They were jumping all well, the the parents. Oh, it was awful. And so I screamed. I mean, top of my lungs. And then I heard a noise. I'm like, oh my God, we're being robbed. So I said, my like, guys, be quiet. I went outside. Mind you, I, this is the more embarrassing part. I just nursed. So I had not put anything back on. And I was looking not sexy. <laughs> yeah. Like, not to script. And there stood one of the handyman. I'm like, did you hear that? He's like, I heard everything. And I was just, I was mortified. I'm like, this guy respected me. And he heard me completely go off the deep end. And that's where I'm like, yeah, this just isn't cool. I'm like, I've got to, I've got to pull it together. Because I was just, I was mortified, you know? Like, I, I want people not just to think I'm a good parent, but I want my kids to think highly yeah. of me. And clearly I, um, I kind of lost sight of that. So that was, that was pretty mortifying. Oh my gosh. Well, we're almost out of time, but I'll share a quick um, mortifying moment for me that happened just yesterday. <laughs> so, my father-in-law and I took my son swimming at a little, tiny little local lake, and uh -huh. there were lots of kids there. And um, I was trying to let him interact with the children by just kind of standing off and watching, but you know, he kept doing things like splashing little children and things are taking kids' toys. So I would be like, Henry, you can't splash if they don't want to be splashed. Henry, we have to share our toy. And um, my voice got higher and higher and higher and, and closer to screaming. And then I heard a little boy come up to my son and he, he said, Henry, can I play with your boat? And Henry said, how do you know my name? And the little boy said, your mom's been screaming it all day. Everyone here knows your name. Ah. So I was blasted by like a five-year-old just yesterday. That's um, that's um, awesome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you experienced it, but that is an awesome story. <laughs> yes. So, um, we're about to wrap it up. Leave your comment to win a copy of the book. And there are two cool events coming up if you want to see a screening of Mom Cave or meet people from Mom Cave. And the first one, Sheila will be at on let's see September 19th which is a Friday there's going to be an Apple Tots Mom's Night Out in Westchester and I'll put the link um, below this but if you're a mom and you want to come and see me and Sheila and um, I think there could be wine there I'm not sure but something <laughs> <laughs> relax together without the kids that's September 19th and then the other thing is that Mom Cave is excited that we are hosting a party at ITV Fest which will be on Saturday, uh, September 27th, and that's itvfest.com. It's the International Television and um, Film Festival, which is, I'm sorry, I'm talking so fast. The Independent <laughs> TV and Film Festival, and we're having a party, and kids are invited, and parents, and it's going to be great. Cool. So, um, thanks for talking to me. I'm so inspired by you, and I think you're really awesome. Thank and you. everybody, run out. And well, you don't run out. Click, click, and buy this book <laughs> quickly. Pre-order Amazon. Please, please. Thank yeah. you so much for having me on. Anytime. Okay, everybody, it's your turn to start the challenge. My nails are orange. Love it. All right. Cool. It's great talking to you. You too. Have a good night. Yeah. Bye. Bye.